My name is Multi Charter. I'm not a journalist or a photographer. I'm just a normal ornithologist. That's a person that researches birds. During the last few years, I've been documenting, okay, not professionally, an amazing project that I took part of and led parts of it. In this short video, you will hear there are good things in the Middle East. And other than my kids, barn owls are the best. Barn owls in pest control, cooperation, and education. From the GoPro camera of an ornithologist. Farming practices have changed over the last 100 years, from private small farms to intensified large ones. Now we grow more, and irrigation has made it possible to even grow crops in the desert. Crop yield is not the only thing that has increased, so has rodent numbers. To combat rodents, we use rodenticides. Pesticides specially made to kill mammals. After a while, rodenticides become inefficient. But poison our water and kill the natural predators of rodents. There is an alternative. Barn owls can be used as biological pest control agents of rodents. Barn owls breed close to humans, use nest boxes, and yes, they love to eat rodents. So what do we need to do? First of all, the barn owls need our help. They need a place to breathe. First step, get a bunch of helpers and build some barn owl nest boxes. Place the barn owl nest boxes in your fields. Ideally, you want to add the nest boxes and locations with the least amount of disturbance. Be patient, and before you know it, the barn owls will come and breed. In Israel, barn owls lay up to 13 eggs. Then can raise as many as 11 nestlings. During the 60 days the nestlings are in the nest box, the nestlings know how to do three things. Eat, poop, and cry. The nestlings start flying at around 60 days of age, but they stay close to the nest for the next few months. From hatching to independence, the nestlings know how to do one thing best, that is to eat. A family of barn owls eats between two to 6,000 rodents a year. There are currently 3,000 nest boxes in Israel, and Israel holds the densest population of breeding barn owls in the world. So what do we do? First of all, we work directly with the farmers and advise them how to add the nest boxes. We monitor almost all the nest boxes and band and ring all the nestlings and adults. An important part of the project is scientific research. Study the ecology, evolution, movement, and behavior of the owls. We collect and analyze the owl pellets, the indigestible portions of prey that form into a tiny pellet that when open you can determine exactly what the owls eat. We help the farmers by building and fixing the already existing nest boxes. We even use old ammunition crates and fix them and turn them into nest boxes. Instead of using them for war, we use them for the barn owls. Multi-charter, yes, that is me, added GPS tags to study the movement of the owl and found that the barn owls would not only hunt in Israel, but those that bred in Israel would hunt in Jordan and the Palestinian Authority. Barn owls truly know no boundaries. It became clear if we wanted to protect our barn owls, we had to do more than just protect them in Israel and cross the border and work with our Jordanian and Palestinian neighbors. The project was started in 2002 and led by Professor Yossi Lesh. We went to Jordan and we went to the Palestinian Authority to reduce pesticide use and protect wildlife. 
In cooperation with many NGOs, universities, and also the Israeli government, our first stage was to educate and train. Jordanians, Palestinians, and Israelis would meet frequently and listen to different experts from all different fields. We would visit together and go in a field and see firsthand the different techniques and different methods we would learn in the lectures. And of course, we always had group discussions and an open dialogue. Part of the training was hands-on. For example, building nesting boxes together. Many Palestinians and Israelis worked together to add nesting boxes. After the Israeli ammunition crates, the Jordanians actually used old recycled ballot boxes from their recent election and turned them into Bardal boxes. <laughs> and yes, the Barnals came and bred. Here's an example of Barnals in Jordan. We would cross the border and work together, one next to each other teaching each other how to properly check the nest boxes, measure the nestlings and adults, and ring them. Just like in Israel, we would collect the owl pellets and analyze them. Important part of the project is collecting the data. While spending time together, we had the opportunity to see each other's wildlife, like this hoopoe in Jordan. Just like at any work, one of the most important things is getting to know each other. And this is an important part of the project. We would speak to each other about each other's family, and yes, even became Facebook friends. During our group trips, we even visited a Christian church, a Jewish synagogue, and a Muslim mosque. My favorite part is having fun. We had lots of fun together, and still do. And I shortly found out that Jordanians are way better dancers than I am. When you can joke with somebody, you know who they're your friend. In addition to barn owls, we also had cross-border meetings in education. In order to learn about each other, we'd visit each other's schools in Israel and in Jordan. One of the fruits of our cooperation was cross-border conservation, here with vultures. Israel and Jordan would work together to treat injured vultures. The goal, to finally release them back to nature. Our region is not used to getting positive PR. So we invested a lot of time in the media, both local and international. Yeah. Even the BBC made a piece of how a male barn owl that was ringed in Israel nested with a female barn owl that was ringed in Jordan. These barn owl chicks may be hissing with discontent, but as the first offspring of Israeli Jordanian parents, they don't know how special they are. Farmers on either side of the border between the two countries have been using owls to kill mice and rats instead of laying poisons since 2002 when, with the help of Jordanian authorities and the Israeli Society for the Protection of Nature, nesting boxes were placed in their fields for the owls to breed in. And finally, after 10 years, the owls got on with doing what the birds and bees usually do. So for them, they don't know that the border is here and they probably met, you know, not like people at a bar or something like that. They met one night and decided to have a uh, that they fell in love and they started a nest here and, and that's uh, the whole the whole concept is is that you know for them it doesn't matter for the Jordanian or Israeli they're barn owls and it's for us it's a great success story because it shows because of the Jordanians started thinking differently started using the barn owls they succeeded in addition to a cross-border project we invest a lot of time in education within Israel In Israel, we have Jews, Christian, Muslim Arabs, Druzi, Bedouin, Cherkessi. We are all Israeli. We need to work together to understand each other better. Through environmental education, we bring the children of the different ethnic and religious backgrounds together. I may be biased, but there's nothing more fun than building a barn owl or a bird box. 
Owl pellets are one of the best ways to bring children closer to nature and study the skeletal system. Okay. The children of all the backgrounds work together using real life data. There's nothing like going to the field and working. Kids get to learn about each other's religion and culture. And after all, kids are kids. When you put them together, the one thing they know to do better than anything else is have fun. Doesn't matter what religion or culture you have. So for me, the take home message here of this video is there is hope for the Middle East. Not only for the people, but also for the world.